Touchdown BC is sponsored by the Robertson Braun Group, Remax Kelowna. Thinking real estate in Kelowna? Think Blake Robertson, Marlene Braun. For more information, call 250-212-2888 or 250-872-5214. Welcome to Touchdown BC Episode 4. I'm your host, Adam Kordick, and joining me again, as he did last year, is my co-host, Ty Clark. Ty? You ready to talk some football? Adam, I'm always ready to talk football. We've got a big show ahead of us this week. We're talking a little BCFC, UBC, and Jim Mullen's going to be talking with Jamie Borum. It's time to get in the action. We are past the halfway point in the BCFC season, and the playoff picture is starting to take shape. This week, each team will get some much-needed rest as the BCFC will take the Labor Day weekend off. Before the break, we had some massive games being played this past weekend. Okanagan looked to stay perfect against the 4-1 Langley Rams. The VI Raiders looked for a bounce-back win over the Kamloops Broncos. And the 4-1 West Shore Rebels took on the Valley Huskers. VI visiting Kamloops second Q Anthony Arduini converts from 24 yards out to give the Broncos the lead, 3-zip. Same Q Colby Hankel steps back to pass and finds a wide-open Brody Bernier. No one is catching this guy. He will run it in for the 69-yard major. Cam loops up 10-0. Late in the half, VI gets on the board with his 45-yard field goal from James Parker. But the Bronx and Arduini answer back with a 39-yard field goal of their own. Cam loops up 13-3 at the break. Third cue, the Raiders get a break. Broncos looking to punt, but Brody Taylor flies in for the block and Raiders recover. Nate Berg then would run it in from two yards out. Raiders down by three. In the fourth, Parker's leg comes through for his team, not once, but twice. B.I. wins this one, 16-13, over the Broncos. The Raiders move to 3-3 three three after the win and will visit the Langley Rams on September 10th after the league-wide break. Kamloops goes to 0-6 and will play the Huskers next in Chilliwack. Huskers taking on the Rebels. First cue, Noah Faulkner finds big Blake Draper and Drapes makes a move to the outside, cuts inside and rumbles. No one can take him down till the red zone. Couple plays later, Faulkner connects with Mike West on the post pattern for six and the lead. West Shore would answer and keep answering thanks to this guy, Jamel Lyles, the BCFC's leading rusher. He takes the rock for a huge gain. Lyles would end the day with 272 yards on the ground and two TDs including this one from six yards out. Valley, like they have done each week, showed some promise. Noah connects with his brother, Elijah, for the major. I'm assuming they have done this once or twice before, but West Shore would just be too strong. The Rebels would go on to defeat the Huskers 45 to 28. West Shore shows that they can run at will in this one. After the break, they will host the Okanagan Sun, which looks like it will be the game of the season. Valley moves to 0-6 and will host the Kamloops Broncos on September 10th. Okanagan stayed undefeated against Langley in a defensive game this past weekend thanks to a fumble recovered by Jamie Turek in the end zone. Kizila also ran one in from 25 yards out in the fourth queue and then Ty Kitzman iced the game with this pick, his second of the game. Sun win this one 15-10 over the Rams. Okanagan stays perfect and will take on the West Shore Rebels with first place on the line again after the break. With the loss, Langley moves to 4-2 and, and will host the VI Raiders on the 10th. Now let's take a look at the standings. The Sun are still on top with a record of 6-0 with the Rebels just one game behind. With the loss, Langley drops to 4-2. and two. Raiders are at 500 and the Broncos and the Huskers are three games out of that final playoff spot. The BCFC's Offensive Player of the Week for Week 6 is West Shore Rebels running back Jamel Lyles. The Lord Tweeds Marilun ran all over the Huskers' defense. He carried the ball 25 times for 272 yards and two touchdowns. The BCFC's Defensive Player of the Week is Kamloops Broncos defensive back Jordan Ango. Jordan had six tackles and one interception in a loss to the Raiders. Ango now has six picks on the year, good enough for first in that statistic. 
For the fourth time this season, the BCFC Special Teams Player of the Week is Langley Rams kicker Tiernan Doherty. Doherty had 10 punts, averaging 34.7 yards, was 3 for 4 in field goals against the Sun. The NFL season is just about to start, so for you NFL fans, KCU's Andrew Wadden caught up with Patriots' Garrett Blunt and former Seahawk Ricardo Lockett when they were in Vancouver at the elite football camp at BC Place this past July. All right, we're here with the LeGarrette Blunt of the uh, New England Patriots and uh, LeGarrette. Talk about a camp like this. I mean, you're up in Canada right now teaching football to Canadian kids. Like, is this a little surreal for yourself being an American? It's amazing, man. You know, um, we've been here for a couple of days and we've enjoyed it. You know, um, the tradition here with uh, with Canada Day, um, you know, we've enjoyed every part of it. We've, we've walked around and, and seen different things that, you know, obviously we don't see, you know what I'm saying? And, 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 and it's been an amazing experience, you know, and, and as far as coming here and, and doing camps with kids, um, I'm down for that, whether it's in, you know, the States or Vancouver, China, wherever, you know, I'm, I'm down to do that. You know, I'm always a fan. I'm always, been, I've always been a fan of giving back, you know, and I want to continue to be that guy that, that everybody looks to and, and know that I'm going to always try my best to give back, give back to kids in the community, you know what I'm saying? Now, you're starting to see a lot more Canadians ma making their way into the NFL. Of course, Christian Covington, who's putting on this camp, uh, playing with the Houston Texans. Now, as far as football is growing around the world, like how do you see it in terms of like Canadian kids coming? Because they're not only just going down to the States, the NCAA, making the route. Now they're making the route through the CIS as well, which I'm sure you're familiar with too. Um, I mean, the, the level of football doesn't decrease, the, the, uh, you know, where you're from, you know. It doesn't matter where you're from. If you love football, if you can play football, if you're good at it, you know you're gonna be you're gonna you're gonna be good at it. No matter if you're from the U.S., no matter if you're from Canada, no matter if you're from anywhere, you know you're gonna you're gonna be good at it if you love the sport. You know as much as as much as I do or the next guy does, you know you I feel like you're gonna have a chance to be good at it. Now, of course, you're playing with one of the greatest coaches in NFL history, and Bill Belichick. I mean, how much of a blessing is it to be with a coach like him? It's a tremendous blessing, you know. Uh, I'm, 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 I'm being coached by, you know, in my opinion, the greatest coach to ever, you know, uh, step foot on a uh, step foot on the sideline, you know, and on the football, you know. So, I'm, I'm tremendously blessed. Um, I love everything about Bill. You know, he's a straight shooter, 100% honest. You know, and and that's one that's one quality that that you got to love about him. Here with Ricardo Lockett, formerly of the Seattle Seahawks and now a professional karaoke singer. <laughs> uh, if you guys didn't hear, he's doing the Rihanna tune for us right now. Uh, Ricardo, people from British Columbia are obviously familiar with you just playing just a couple hours south with the Seahawks. Uh, talk about coming up to a camp like this because this is very unique for Canada. For sure. For sure. It, it, was, it was more personal for me. You know, because there's a lot of Seahawks fans here, and uh, it's good to be in Hawk country. I feel at home. It's my first time ever in Canada. So uh, I, once Zeke and uh, the guys talked about doing a camp here, it was a no-brainer for me because it was a personal connection for me. Well, yeah, I mean, the, the fan base for the Seattle Seahawks over the last few years has just exploded here in B.C. You must have seen it playing down south. I mean, just see the contingent of fans that are coming out. Me might not, not necessarily know they're from Canada, but there was a huge amount of Canadian fans coming up to see you all play. Oh, for sure. And, hey, we definitely appreciate the support. That's what gets us going. You know, the 12th man is definitely a part of our game. It's not something that we just say. You know, we can't play with without the guys, so we appreciate it, man. Now talk about Canadians playing in the NFL. Now obviously Christian Covington has made the jump uh, playing with the Houston Texans now. Guys are not only having to take the route to go down south to America to play in the NCAA, you're getting guys coming in from the CIS just like Stephon Charles. I mean, when it comes to the NFL nowadays, it's there's no rock unturned to find players, is there? No, man. It, it doesn't matter where you come from. Uh, it's about if you're playing at a lower level, play like you don't belong. If you're playing, playing with, the, with the D1 guys, the big-time guys, be the best. Compare yourself to the best guy in your position. And that's, that's how we become great. We overcome adversity and confidence. There you have it, Ricardo Lockett, formerly of the Seattle Seahawks. It was a disastrous preseason start against the Manitoba Bisons this past weekend at West Hills Stadium in Langford, which saw the first ever CS game played at stadium. UBC looked rusty at best in the 50-7 shellacking, particularly Michael O'Connor, who amassed three interceptions and no touchdowns in the evening. The Thunderbirds will look to get off on the right foot by starting their 2016 campaign this Saturday against Alberta at Thunderbird Stadium at 8 p.m. UBC taking on Manitoba and things look sour early on as Michael O'Connor hands the ball off to Ben Cummings who loses a grip on it. 
Cam Teshuk picks it up for the Bisons. The very next play, under center, Teo Dizar fakes the handoff and looks deep, but it's picked off by freshman Jacob G. Jacob Gazzazada, a friend of the show, making his first start with the Birds. O'Connor back under center, but he gets steamrolled by the QB converted DB, Martins Foster. Ouch. Next cue, T-Birds trailing. O'Connor with the play action, can't find an open target. Bootlegs out left, but can't find a seam. Bison's defense all over O'Connor in this one. UBC goes at it again. O'Connor drops back, and the pocket collapses around him. So he throws up a miracle a little short of his intended receiver, Trey Kellogg. But look at that deflection right in the hands of David Mann, who makes no mistake scoring for the Thunderbirds. But what's this? A late flag and a hold by Ben Harrington would negate all the magic. So Teo Dizar and the Bisons go back to work, and just like that, there's a 14-point swing from a would-be UBC TD to a Manitoba Bisons TD. O'Connor, desperate to get his team back into this one, throws a dart to Will Watson, but he's covered like white on rice, and somehow the ball juggles off Watson's arm and right in the hands of a Bison defender before being taken down by O'Connor himself. Manitoba went on to score that drive, and with the game starting to get out of hand, O'Connor makes another crucial throwing error. This time, another Bison's rookie gets in on the action, sidestepping Connor for the pick six and all about putting a stamp on this one. But back to the air, the birds would go, and now you might want to look away as Michael O'Connor throws a duck into double coverage, hoping to find Marcus Davis, but he'd find another white jersey instead. Tristan O'Mara gets the INT for the Bisons and rumbles 35 yards just outside of UBC's red zone. And just to top it all off, Cameron Fox slips by Jacob G in cover one to put the icing on the cake, 50-7 to Manitoba. Michael O'Connor finished his day with three interceptions and no touchdowns, while Teo Dizar had three touchdowns and one interception to the tune of 210 yards. Manitoba's Stephen Ugba led all receivers with 93 yards in the night, followed by Jesse Walker, Shai Ross, Tristan Dice, and Cam Fox, who had a touchdown apiece for the Bisons. Marshall Cook had the lone touchdown for the T-Birds. The Thunderbirds' next game will be the season opener as they take on the Alberta Golden Bears at Thunderbird Stadium this Saturday at 8 p.m. For ticketing inquiries, email guest.services at ubc.ca or buy tickets online at ticketmaster.ca. All over the CIS, especially in the Canada West, there are many BC-born players that travel out of the province to play some big-time uni ball. With one week before the CIS season officially kicks off, let's take a look at some of the BC-born players BC football fans should be looking out for. One BC-born player you want to watch out for is Victoria native and Mount Doug alum Marcus Davis of UBC. Davis was pivotal in UBC's championship run last season and will be counted on once again in a quest for a repeat. Another is Jesse Walker. This Mission Secondary alum who plays receiver for the Manitoba Bisons will be a go-to target in a pass-first offense. Look for him to have a huge year. Robbie Yoakum from McMaster. Robbie, who is a Kelowna native and Okanagan Sun alum, will be the leader in the secondary for Mac this year. In his team's first game, he led the way with seven tackles and a pick. This week in a segment we call BCFC Grads, Where Are They Now? Jim Mullen sits down with former Abbotsford Air Force player and nine-year CFL veteran Jamie Borum to talk about what junior football has meant to him and what he is up to now. Well, we've been calling these segments BCFC, where are they now? I prefer to call them stars of the past starting today because I'm joined by Jamie Borum. Uh, and, and Jamie, we were uh, talking about the places that you've played, and I think I have a roadmap of it, and there's a whole lot of mileage there. Uh, it, it, it starts in Abbotsford with the Abbotsford Air Force. You played with three CIS teams, and uh, how many CFL teams? Because you were drafted by one, traded by another, and then you played with a few others. Uh, a great way to see the country. Oh, it's been fantastic. Uh, the opportunities that were given to me by junior and university and the pros. And to see Canada and, yeah, some mileage for sure. A couple different cars ran through. Uh, uh, let, let's start uh, uh, back in junior with the Abbotsford Air Force. And uh, you come from a football family uh, as well. It goes back a couple of generations. Uh, was, was it easy for you to uh, fall in with, uh, with a junior team? Uh, it was interesting. Just grew up, junior was never the plan. It was play for Vancouver College, do well in high school and get a 
scholarship, go to university and play pro from there. And just uh, university wasn't the right fit in my first t first go around, and, and found my found a new home in junior, which was football was fun and exciting, and I was given every opportunity to do anything I wanted to do. So. Uh, you, you went after uh, three years at Abbotsford, played at uh, UBC for a year, missed the Vanier Cup ring uh, yeah. by a year. But uh, why did you pull the shoot in your your first time around in uh, in university? Because you went on and played with another two university teams. Yeah, it, would, it just wasn't the right fit. Um, football went from playing at Vancouver College, and that was the best thing in the world in high school. And then to go from there to playing a university that you don't really have ties to it it was a difficult transition so um it would we just ended up being a better place to go play junior and uh learn how to do school a little bit better uh you you also played at the university of saskatchewan and the university of manitoba tell me about your days in saskatchewan uh saskatchewan uh it was a great time going to the prairies is is one of the best experiences and from vancouver you're thinking I don't want to go to the prairies, but uh, my, all my time in, in on the prairies was was good time. And uh, we, what did we do? We uh, won the national, the Can West final against UBC, and went to Laval in '99 and lost to Laval in the semifinal. You know, when when you think about your time on the prairies, either with uh, Saskatchewan or the University of Manitoba. Um, what lessons do you learn about the football culture uh, there that you can bring back uh, here to BC? Because the, the football culture in BC and the football culture in, in those three prairie provinces, they're, they're kind of worlds apart at times, aren't they? Yeah, you get uh, probably the closest thing to American college football, that experience where the whole town, the whole city, and anyone within three hours will drive and they'll come watch the game. and. Just you walk around town and, and people know you and people care and it's that's just a it's a feeling that I've only experienced in Saskatchewan and I don't think you'll you'll find it anywhere else. Within the team and within the room, though, I, I would think that the the camaraderie, the brotherhood, uh, in a place like Saskatchewan or especially a place like Manitoba, that that room run by Brian Dovey is about as close as you can get to the junior experience as possible, isn't it? Yeah, it's, uh, it's on the, it's not on the lighter side, but you, like they really preach a family and, uh, and people buy in to something that's a little bit bigger than they are. And those are two of the big things through playing junior and going on to play with the Bisons uh, that I found. And it was great experiences all around. Now, now, tell us about your time uh, in the Canadian Football League. Uh, a, a few speed bumps along the way before you actually got to play a game, right? Yeah, so I got drafted by the Lions second round in 2000 and something. 2000, I think. And uh, so I went to camp there, and that was the year after Louis retired. And I, during camp, I just you, you knew the writing was on the wall, and I, so I knew I was getting released, and uh, Coach Doby was talking to me. Uh, throughout that time and we weren't sure if I was going to go back and play another year junior or if I was going to go to Manitoba and so I called him during camp and said when they release me I'll come play for the Bisons <laughs> and he was just shocked but uh, yeah it, went to Bisons and then later on just kind of worked out that the Lions traded my rights to the Bombers and so during my time with the Bisons I would go to Bomber camp and at the end of my CIS career the Bombers traded me to Hamilton and that was that's where I kicked off. And, and uh, from Hamilton, uh, you managed to uh, to get some good years in there. But uh, you also uh, went around the league, went around the circuit a bit. Uh, went to Saskatchewan, went to Toronto, back to Saskatchewan again. Yeah. And uh, so what's it with you in Saskatchewan? <laughs> I don't know. It, just, I, <laughs> it was meant to be there. I don't know. It was. I was thankful for every experience, uh, every place, either. I learned something new or I had a great experience and lots of the places I went through just helped me really enjoy being in Saskatchewan and it was just that community is second to none. Now now from what I understand back in your in your junior days in your university days 
uh, you are quite a lightning rod out there. You you, you draw you drew a lot of uh, attention because you're quite a competitor, from what I understand. Uh, did that did that come up in uh, in rivalries? For instance, I I, I understand that uh, you love playing against the Okanagan Sun. That was the best uh, playing in junior. That and that's probably what really started to fuel the fire of football being fun again after university and. You, you found that rivalry and you found that co competitiveness and that competition from someone else and you found it was a bigger game than just you playing in a game and I had great times playing the Sun. Uh, usually came up on the wrong side of it uh, but we managed to put the only blemish on uh, their last national championship run. Yeah, you're talking about the, um, uh, the experience playing in, in a place like Saskatoon Kelowna for, for junior football is pretty close to that in terms of uh, the support that they can get, uh, the feeling that you can that you can get in that stadium when they put a good crowd in there. Is that about as close as you can get to the Prairie It's experience? exactly what I tell the kids there. I'm like, this is one of the most recruitable, if not the most recruitable place in Canada. It's, it's in BC, but it's kind of like the Prairies. And it, oddly enough, there's a ton of Saskatchewan people there too. Uh, but just to be able to be in the community, like they're in the paper every day. And uh, it, it's neat to get in the paper for a kid. And they see that and they get to follow it and their parents can follow it. And like they get a bunch of people out to, to game. 1,500 is probably a small game for them. And they've been successful. Uh, you're, you're coaching uh, high school now. You're a teacher now. You're obviously advertising on your shirt there. With the <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and not, nothing like stepping up the recruiting program right there for the private school. Uh, um, tell me uh, what it was like making the transition out of football because it was, it was a pretty smooth transition because the transition was kind of back into football again, wasn't it? Yeah, it worked out pretty perfect. I was, I'm probably one of the luckiest people in the world. Uh, when I was a young guy, I said I was going to play professional football and somewhere in early high school I decided I'm going to teach and along the way my dad pulled me aside and taught me how to coach and so every off season I'd come home and home's Vancouver and got hooked up with Notre Dame which was odd at the time because I went to Vancouver College um, and they made me their basic full-time sub and I was took over the basketball program helping out with football and yeah, it was, it was just great, and come the end of my career when I tore my ACL for the third time, uh, retired and Notre Dame had a job for me. Tell me what it's like, uh, because there is a bit of a disconnect at times between uh, the high school football culture and junior football culture I I in the province. For, for someone who benefited so much from playing junior football and had such a great time uh, playing junior football, what sort of message do you give uh, to players who are playing high school football uh, for your team at Notre Dame that uh, may be looking in other directions but might need that development or that opportunity or just approach the game in a way where, where they approach it as it being fun even though it's highly competitive. Yeah, I, th I think more than just high school players and coaches, I think parents need to wrap their head around the idea. Um, not everyone's ready to go play university football and that doesn't mean that they're not ready on the field but they might not be ready in the classroom. And having the opportunity to go to like a Douglas College or Cap College and learn how to do university at a college, um, it's, it's not half the price, but it's a lot cheaper to go to. And some of the uh, programs, the junior programs in the province provide scholarship opportunities if you're going to school. So you can still have your school paid for. And when you get two years for free as an 18-year-old, those two years don't count against your eligibility. And, it's, it's an opportunity to get bigger, to get stronger, to learn how to do school. Uh, so when you do go to school, you're taking advantage of every opportunity given to you. Well, and there's also the uh, added benefit of learning a trade before you go to university as well. And in some cases, with a, with a lot of junior players, they'll learn that trade and actually work instead of going to university. Yeah. And there's nothing wrong with that, is no, there? No, like, that's a great opportunity. Because like, university's not for everyone either, right? So someone might be more interested in going, being in the fire department. And, you know, it, that can provide opportunities for some scholarship to do some school that way. And uh, anyone, uh, electricians and plumbers and construction guys, like, there's opportunities to go to school. And for those people who don't want, aren't necessarily that university type, um, 
it's junior's great. They have an opportunity to advance their football, and if they play long enough in junior, there's an opportunity to get recognized. And uh, the Lions and Saskatchewan, and uh, like lots of the teams, are taking advantage of the junior players. Uh, we're just past the halfway point in the uh, BCFC season. I know you're going to get into your uh, high school season soon, and that that's what kind of surrounds you. But how do you follow the uh, the BCFC? Uh, well, I've had some involvement with the Okanagan Sun over the past years. Um, before I came, moved down here, I was helping out their kicker a little bit, and yeah, that's a neat story. That kid, uh, Keely Heinz, is uh, profoundly deaf and wears cochlear implants when he plays, and well, for his whole life. And so it it's great to see a kid like that succeeding. Uh, so I've had great opportunities in working with Coach Ben McCauley up there now. Uh, so, but I keep an eye on it and from time to time. If there's an opportunity to go to a game, go to a game. Uh, are, are, are you surprised with the uh, level of success Ben has had at, uh, at Okanagan so far? He's, he's got a good core of kids. Um, there's some leftover kids there that are great people. And uh, those kids built a family of what they were. And, uh, and they're strong together. So that was bound to carry over, like, um, just because the kids and whoever was going to be that guy, like, those kids were going to be those kids. And they got great kids, and they're only going to get better. As I've seen them play, well, I think I've almost seen every game they played so far this year. And they're only getting better. They haven't played a perfect game. They haven't played even a great game. Like, they've been mediocre. and. That's a good thing because they're what five and zero now, and uh, they, they're going to be better along the way, which is which is a nice thing. Before I let you go, uh, what's your synopsis on on the uh, Notre Dame jugglers? Notre Dame jugglers, <laughs> uh, they got a great bunch of kids too. Um, they've been they won the grade eight championship. They uh, were in the junior final in their grade ten year. Um, I, I missed a bunch of them last year, so I just was too far away to know a whole lot. But being around the past week and a half, uh, they got some players. They got some athletes. And if they put it together, you know, they'll have a chance. Stay healthy. Um, so I'm hoping for good things from them. Jamie, thanks for coming in. I appreciate you coming all the way into town. Uh, I understand uh, your travel usually stops at around uh, what is it, Hastings, Boundary Road, up, up <laughs> in that right area? Right by the P&E. Yeah, right yeah. by the P&E, and then I, you don't make it past the P&E. No, a five-minute commute. <laughs> I appreciate you coming downtown and, uh, and doing this hit with us. Thanks very much. No problem. Thanks. Well, that does it for us here at Touchdown BC this week. This week was big. Adam, what about next week? Next week, we're going to be previewing the BC high school season. We're going to have some community, and we're going to bring you an update on what happened on UBC versus Alberta in their opening game of the season. So everyone take care, we'll see you next week, and thanks for watching. Touchdown BC is sponsored by the Robertson Braun Group, Remax Kelowna. Thinking real estate in Kelowna? Think Blake Robertson, Marlene Braun. For more information, call 250-212-2888 or 250-878-5242.